In today's video, we're going to be talking about the geometry topic of conic sections and what you can usually expect to see on the ACT related to this topic. So when we're talking about a conic section, that's an intersection of a plane and a cone. And we're talking about circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas here. When we're looking at this intersection with the plane and the cone, you can see how each of these figures are formed. You're probably familiar with each of these figures in general, but then you can see how they come about with the intersection of the plane and the cone here in these figures. So first, let's talk a little bit about parabolas. We have a standard form and a vertex form that you would see of a parabola. The parabola is a curve with vertex H and K, and we can read that vertex directly from the equation if we're given in the vertex form. The parabola is a symmetric figure with an axis of symmetry, and we're going to talk about how to find that in just a moment. But when we have this form here, when we open up or even down, we're going to have the x squared, the x term is squared, and we have the y equals that. In talking that about a parabola opening upward or downward, if the value of a, which we see, which is the coefficient on the term out in front, when a is positive, the parabola opens upward. If a is negative, the parabola is going to open downward. And talking again about the axis of symmetry, with a parabola being a symmetric figure, meaning that we can take this axis of symmetry, you could almost imagine folding the parabola on top of one another, and it's the same on the left as it is on the right. We can get the axis of symmetry, which is a line, as x equals minus b over 2a. And we get that b or a value from our standard form, that a x squared, the coefficient on the x squared, plus b, the coefficient on the x. a x squared plus b x plus c. And just read right off of that, and we can get that axis of symmetry as the line x equals negative b over 2a. Now similarly, parabolas can open to the right or to the left. And in this case, you'll see the difference, the way you know the difference. Here we have our equation on the left-hand side as x equals y squared. The y term is squared. On the right-hand side, we have x equals a negative y squared. So we talked about on the previous slide about a parabola opening upward or downward based on that leading coefficient being positive or negative. Similarly here, when we open left or right, if the coefficient on the y squared term is positive, it's going to open to the right, and if the coefficient is negative, it opens to the left. One form of question you may have on parabolas, or really any conic sections, is you could be given a graph and try to match that with an equation, or given an equation and match that with a graph, either way. Knowing the general format of these conic sections, it will make it easier because we know some of the properties related to the equations and we can match those up. So we've talked about parabolas opening upward or downward, to the right or to the left. We've looked at their axis of symmetry. There's also just a couple of more things you may need to know about parabolas. The graph here on our left shows our axis of symmetry of this parabola that's opening upward. There's a couple of other things I want to talk about. We've already talked about the vertex being h and k, and we can get that from the vertex form of our equation. There's also a focus and a directrix, and you can see that in both of these graphs here, the one that opens upward and the one that opens to the right. The main point I want to focus on, because it's the kind of questions we see, the focus of a parabola is inside the curve, if you'll notice that. It's an equal distance from the vertex as the directrix is in the, the opposite direction. The directrix is a line, and we can actually calculate these values for focus and directrix. You do need to know this in some of your math classes, but most of the questions thus far that we've ever seen on the ACT related, it may ask a general question of what the focus is, but knowing that it's inside the curve is the key element that you need to know. Knowing the location, you have a focus, you have a vertex, and you have a directrix, 
outside of the inside of the curve of the parabola. That's going to be important. If you want to go a little bit further and actually how to calculate those values, I would suggest you consult some other material. You can find things online in your math books. You're going to talk about it in your math classes. But for the ACT, this is really the general area that we want to focus on. So we can take a look, another review, we have the vertex here that we're pointing out of each of these parabolas. Then we're going to talk about the focus on the inside. And then finally, we'll have the directrix, that line on the outside. Now the next conic section we want to take a look at is an ellipse. An ellipse is very similar to a circle, but it's more elongated, either in the horizontal direction or the vertical direction. This example, we're elongated along the horizontal axis. That is our major axis. The horizontal, it is longer. This is the equation of this particular ellipse, x squared over 4 plus y squared over 1 equals 1. This chart gives us a general outline of what an ellipse looks like. So when we have like the example we have here, notice that the denominator under the x term is larger than the denominator under the y term. That is our key that we're going to have a horizontal major axis. Versus in our chart on the right hand side, if the larger term is under the y squared, we're going to have a major axis in the vertical axis. So our center of an ellipse is very similar to what we look for when we're looking for the center of a circle, the h and the k. If you'll see in the graph, our equation, we have these, this h and k term within the x squared and the y squared, within the x and the y, in the numerator. So when we look at the equation written out, we know that we have a center of 0, 0, and we're going to have an a value of 2 and a b value of 1. And we get that if we look at our equation on the left-hand side, where we have a denominator of 4 under the x squared, that is a squared. So we take the square root, and we're going to get a value of a equals 2. Our value under the y squared term is 1, which is b squared. Take the square root, gives us a b value of 1. From that information, we can match it up with the graph that is drawn with a center of 0, 0. Our major axis of the horizontal axis, we go out to the right and out to the left. Two values, that's our a value and we go up one value from the center in either direction, and then we can connect, and there we have the ellipse. And this just gives us another general layout of what an ellipse looks like with our center point. We have our A value along the horizontal axis, the B value along the vertical axis, and then we have this C value, which we can calculate. And again, that's another value that we're not going to go into detail here in this ACT training, but it's you can get that when you're going over ellipses in your math classes. And if you need more information on that, you can always look that up online. But the point that we want to get through here, these are some things in our ellipse that we may be asked for on the ACT. Our center point, horizontal and vertical axes, and then notice the focus. We had had the focus on the parabola. Similarly to in a parabola, the focus is inside the ellipse. And if you'll see, the focus is also only on the major axis. In this case, the major axis is the x-axis. And so our focus is c values away from the center in both directions. Next, we want to take a look at hyperbolas, and hyperbolas are curves. They are curves that are a mirror image of one another. You'll also notice in our hyperbola, we have asymptotes, which are lines that the curves come close to but do not cross. We have this equation right here, x squared over 4 minus y squared over 1 equals 1. And what you'll notice on a hyperbola that's important to note that you can distinguish when you're given an equation is that minus sign between your x squared and your y squared terms. And it's set equal to 1. Just like we have a hyperbola that runs left to right, we have ones that open up or down. And the distinguishing factor there the ones that open left to right, our x squared term is the positive one. And on the right hand side, you can see the, the hyperbolas that open up and down. The y squared term is the positive. 
we still have a minus sign in between, and they're set equal to 1. So these are general features of these sections, these conic sections, that you can use when you're looking at the equation to determine which ones they are. This table gives a little bit more information on the hyperbolas, and you'll see our equations written across the top where you can see what we're talking about here where we have the x squared term positive or the y squared term, the two. We still have a center of h and k, and we can get that from our numerators. We do talk a little bit about the focal length. We're going to look at where they are located, and we do have a vertice on the hyperbola. And let's take a look at this graph here. This hyperbola opens left to right. You'll notice we have the center point, which is the point equal distance from each of the hyperbola, and that's going to help us to draw our asymptote lines, okay? And then we have the major axis, which in this case we talk about opening left to right. One thing, the main thing I want to talk about, after we look, we have a vertex, of course, of each of the hyperbolas, but notice where the focus is on the hyperbola. It's inside the curve, the curve portion. And that falls in line with the other conic sections that we've looked at also. We're not going to necessarily go over here how to calculate where the focus is, but you need to know in general that the focus is inside the curve of the hyperbola. So keeping a, an, a picture of this graphic in your mind about what in general a hyperbola looks like in most cases is going to be enough for you to answer the questions on the ACT. Knowing what the equations looks like, knowing what the general graph looks like. Here is a basic review of our forms of equations when we're talking about the different conic sections. So you know you're going to have a conic section when you have both x and y squared terms, and that's going to be your clue right there. Now, here's some other guidelines as we're classifying each of these equations. A parabola is only going to have one of the terms squared, either x squared or y squared. And remember, we talked about that depends on does the graph open up or down or to the left or right. This one, in this case, would be one that opens up if A is positive. Now, our circle, we didn't really talk about circles in this section. It is considered a conic section, though, but we've talked about circles in other sections. When we have both x and y terms squared with no coefficients here in front, that's going to be a circle. Versus an ellipse, when we have x and y squared terms, and we have, in this case, we show an a and a c, we're going to end up dividing through and we'll get a denominator that's going to give us an ellipse because remember then that gives us a major axis and a minor axis that we look at with that a squared term underneath and a b squared term underneath the y value. When we're talking about a hyperbola, we have both x and y terms squared. We have a minus sign between them. That's going to be important. So that's the hyperbola is the only one with a minus sign between those two terms. Again, in this presentation, we're given a basic review of conic sections, some general formats, general ways that our graphs turn out to look. It's usually enough of what we'll see to help you on the ACT, but this is in general what we need for the ACT. Let's take a look at this ACT type example. Pause the video and we'll come back and work it together. The question asks, what conic section is the following equation classified as? We want to make a couple of observations. First, let's rearrange the equation. We see that we have both an x squared term and a y squared term, and let's get all those on the same side. And when we do that, one thing that should jump out at you is that we have a negative sign between the x squared and the 2y squared. And we talked about that the only form of a conic section that has that is the hyperbola. And so that's going to be answer choice D. We really didn't have to do a lot of calculations. We're just looking at this classification of this conic section equation.